Hello everybody, this is Josh Placer from GameWisdom.com. Welcome to a new player's guide for RimWorld. This is a Dwarf Fortress-esque kind of game from Tyrant Sylvester, Ludion Studios. I'm pretty sure I just butchered that. The game made its way onto Steam very recently, and I've been playing it and basically learning through failure. I'm at the point where I think I can put together a little handy guide for first time players. Before we begin this video, please keep in mind the following. This is going to be a new player's guide, meaning we're not going to be talking about mid to late game elements. I'm going to be leaving out some of the more complicated parts of RimWorld, things that aren't really relevant to new players. If you're expecting an expert, you know, breakdown and everything, that's not what this video is going to be about. This is essentially a survival guide to get you through the first few days and to start to figure out the UI of the game. Another thing to keep in mind, this is based on Alpha 14. This is the first version of RimWorld available on Steam and Early Access, which means that what you see in this video may not be relevant in later versions of the game if you're watching this, you know, down the road or a few months later. Anyway, let's get into it. So, click New Colony. So here are your scenarios. These are what you'll start with, as well as your starting group. I do the classic RimWorld experience just because I always like to play like that. There's options for custom scenarios, but or editing, we're not going to be touching that here. Here we have the element that makes RimWorld special, and that is the AI Storyteller. The AI Storyteller will determine events that can show up in the game, and it's designed to keep you on your toes compared to other titles. You'll never know what they're going to do, but you can adjust them in this kind of way, and these are basically the difficulty settings. So we have Cassandra Classic, Phoebe Chillax, and Randy Random. Probably for starters, um, Phoebe Chillax is good, but I like to do Cassandra Classic just because of the steady curve. I always like to learn these games at like the default level. Now, get the show. It's not showing me the difficulty settings, but rough is usually the default. No idea why it's not popping it up, but we'll leave it alone. Okay. So it's going to create a world, and this is how the game basically generates the play space. You can set a size. Again, for new players, you can just leave this alone. There really isn't anything you're going to be doing here. So here is our world. Depending on when you, where you set it up, you can see the stats over here. The biome is the general environment, terrain, rainfall, types of stone you'll find, Growing period determines when you'll be able to actually grow fruit, or I'm sorry, grow vegetables, plants, or anything like that. Temperature. Basically, this is another way of passively determining the difficulty of the game. For instance, if we're up here in the cold, as you can see, winter, it drops down very low. So if you don't equip your people with warm clothing and have heaters ready, they're going to basically freeze to death. It also means you're very, very limited in terms of growing food, so you'll have to rely on hunting. But if we come down here to where it's, of course, a lot warmer, the tropical rainforest, due to the heat, you can basically grow food all year round, and you don't really have to worry about winter. And here we have more like temperate environments. Now, 
on some of these maps, it may be hard to see, but sometimes there are factions set up. Uh, here's one. Let me move it over here. Which means if we place ourselves close here, there's a good chance we'll get early invasions. So again, this is one thing that new players may not spend too much time on. And again, unless you're going for like specific stories or challenging yourself, usually a temperate or tropical rainforest is a good start. I am going to start pretty much close to like the mountain, maybe close to this lake here. No other factions nearby. Now we come to the characters. You can randomize names, and the game will basically assign you three completely random characters. Alright. Here are their stats. I don't think pop ups are actually working. Oh, one second. There we go, that's what we need. It's important to have these little pop-ups as we'll get information that we need and we'll just make it a little bit easier to learn. So, we'll have to generate a new world. Again, nothing crazy here. We'll still stick to the original plan. You can see we also have like a desert environment. Okay, so we're back here. We have our three random survivors. Now it looks like we're, she also has her brother here. Sometimes you'll get family, other times you won't. Because they're waking up from cryo sleep, they're in trouble. So that's gonna affect their health starting up, but hopefully they will recover. Here we have the character skills, including their passion, which means that they'll be more interested in doing these jobs and learning. This is another one of those screens that can be a little bit tricky because there's a whole lot here to look at. But let's just go over the important stuff. First you have their backstory that determines their basic abilities. More importantly, the incapable of. These are things that they will refuse to do. So this one, Taki, will not haul any items and will not be sociable. Apparently he is also a nudist. Let's see. Let's, we can also randomize, just give us a greater chance. Okay, so that's good. So, she's incapable of violence, which means that she will not attack anyone who comes to invade us. In terms of their skills, again, higher the number, the better. So, we have a really good miner, we also have a really good grower, that actually helps us out. Someone who's good with medicine. And looks like Lawson over here, Lawson Lottie, will be our cook, starting with a level 5. Also, if a job is too low, they will not do it, and we won't be able to even assign it to them. Again, she will never be shooting or hurting anything, nor will she be crafting or research. So... Jin over here is going to probably be one of our most important characters. We'll need to see how this plays out. Part of the challenge of Wimworld is basically getting a random group of people and seeing just what happens. We could randomize this one more time. 
just see here. But I think we'll go with this. Again, as a new player, you're just basically going to go with whatever you get and just see what happens. So now we are officially getting into RimWorld for real, which also means we're going to be doing a lot of pausing <laughs> to look at the UI, which isn't the most newcomer friendly. Okay, there's our crew. So here is our play field. See, the game looks like Prison Architect. They did get the okay to use the art style, but this is definitely nothing like the game once we get going. You can click, double click on people to zoom into them. First thing you want to do is actually look around for steel. Now, because we chose the RimWorld scenario, the RimWorld group, we need to basically free this up for you. So, click that. And click that. Steel is essentially our first major resource. Now, everything over here we want to reclaim as well. In typical dwarf fortress style, we can't interact or co directly command people unless we draft them. So lots of stuff to reclaim. And this is random too, whatever we get and, and its placement. So just doing a quick scope around. I think we got enough. So let's look at the UI. Uh, one last thing. We need to reclaim all this, or I'm sorry, we just need to make it available. Knife, gun, good. Let's go over the UI. All the things we can interact with and essentially build our colony around is built around this menu down here. So I just want to unpause for a split second, get them to move out of the way. Architect, this is where we're going to build and set up basically all of our commands. It's the menu you're going to probably use the most. Orders, tell our people to do stuff. Hunt, slaughter, tame, claim areas, strip, which is really just take stuff from the wounded or dead. Rearm traps, open. Mine, haul, chop. Basically, unless you set jobs, people aren't going to do anything. But to know what people do or what they're going to actually end up working on, that's in the work menu. But we'll need to talk about that in a few minutes. Zone area. This lets us set up area zones where specific things will work in. So for instance, we could expand the snow clear area, which when it snows, people will try and clear it out. The two biggies right now that you need to understand is the stockpile zone and the growing zone. Stockpile sets up where people will store goods. Oh, let me put the mouse over there. You can also expand it. And you basically need this because anything that's in the stockpile will basically be considered in use or exist for the colonists to interact with. Growing will set up a planting area and you'll decide what to plant. This could be food, this could be resources for clothing, etc. These two things you want to set up pretty much right away. Also keep in mind Remember, we set up and we're in the temperate area, so there is a growing period. If we're out of the growing period, you won't be able to grow things. We'll do this in a minute, but it's important to go over all of our UI first. Structure, this is where you'll set up rooms, buildings, essentially anything that will be a place to put stuff or to live in. It's pretty much simple. To create a room, 
You basically drag out the walls, put a door, and you're done. As with Prison Architect, you have different philosophies of how you design your colony. It could be a number of buildings, it could be one very, very big building broken down to rooms. There's no wrong way of building it, and up to you to decide. Again, we'll be doing this in a few minutes. Production, this is for setting up anything that has to do with crafting or working. You have a hopper to hold resources for machines, crafting spots to set up to create like simple items, and then these items are for actually making stuff, whether it's sculptures, food. This will also expand as you do research. And this is even where we do research right here. Again, we'll be going over this stuff in detail in a few minutes. Furniture for setting up things to do, whether it's for torches, beds, sleeping, furniture, basically anything that there'll be like quality of life stuff will go here. Beds will beds and the equipment rack are biggies. But usually beds are going to be one of the first things we're going to build. You're going to need one bed per colonist to keep people happy. Power is where you'll set up for using electricity and basically getting your wiring going. How it works as a brief is you'll need one of these power generators. Sorry, there we go. Let me get that off there. This will generate energy. Energy needs to be stored in a battery. And you'll need to run power conduits to areas that need electricity or to equipment. Again, we'll go over this more detail later in. Security, setting up defenses. This is, will also expand with more things as we research them. Miscellaneous, simply like random stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. Flooring, basically makes things better. And you'll be using this for inside. Joy, things that make people happy, and that's about it. Ship, I'm not exactly sure what that does, but we're not going to really worry about that in this video and temperature temperature is an important one this will allow you to control uh, the temperature of various rooms you have a heater cooler and a vent the cooler is very important as this can be used to cool down rooms and to create a freezer to preserve food there's no other refrigeration at the start, so you will have to make use of this. But it needs power, which is going to set us up for that goal. That's the Architect tab. Now we look at the Work tab. This sets up all the jobs. You can set manual priorities. Basically, higher the number, I believe, means the higher the priority. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Lower the number, lower the priority. Again, this is for advanced play. We're not going to really worry about that right now. If we look here, you can see these are the jobs that everyone that's available in the game. Some of these jobs have no square, which means that these people will refuse to do this. So, Larson and Shaper will not do any research. So we really only have one researcher. Now, Sal Tal over here has passion for cooking, hunting, and mining. So I actually want to set her up to do those jobs. Let me get back here. Archaeologist, let's put him over here. And if you set up to a job they're passionate about, they'll have a greater chance of learning or they'll learn it quicker. But we are going to need miners at the start.
And other than that, yeah, we'll set up a grower there. So Tao over here is going to be our workhorse for right now due to all the jobs that she is good with. But again, if you want to be more complicated, you can set up priorities to make it so people will do specific jobs. Again, that's more of an advanced thing. We're not going to worry about that here. Restrict, this basically sets up their schedules. Again, another advanced thing. So you can set it up so that they'll do anything. They'll have a time for joy and they will sleep. You can see they'll set up to get eight hours of sleep. Again, this is more advanced play. We're not going to really worry about that in this video. These are the animals we have available. As you saw when we started, we have one pet. So we can set up the pet to actually be trained. First, we'll need to do obedience. But I don't think we have anyone who can train, and the pet may not be available for this. We may need to tame a more intelligent animal for a pet, usually like a dog or even like a fox. Probably not a turkey. <laughs> These are the factions of the world. You can see two people really hate us, three are tolerant of us. The history, this is everything that's going on. Again, we only need to worry about that here. Same as statistics for right now. Research is what you're going to set up to unlock new things. Until we get a research bench, we can't really do anything. But these are all the things we'll be able to unlock and grow with as time goes on. And whew, we're about 15 minutes in. We haven't even really started playing the game yet. So let's go over our priorities. Again, we want to set up some growing. Oh, and these are areas we'll be able to mine out as the time comes. We're looking for compacted steel. As steel is one of the early major resources, we'll need a lot of it. So it looks like we'll be mining that out later on. So first thing, I'm going to set up a little growing zone. You can make it as big as you want. Okay. It's kind of hard to see, but you can sort of make out the rectangle. Or the square, I'm sorry. These are all the plants we can build or grow the little eye to get more information. The big ones are going to be like food, like potato, corn, rice. Hay is for animals, obviously. And cotton for fiber for cloth, so we can actually make clothing for our people. So, you saw there, it needs a minimum skill of five. Do we have anyone who can grow at level 5? So we do. So because we have that, I'm going to set this to a 5 and let's see, who has 5 again? I think it was Tal? No. No, Sarah over here, Sarah Shaper has a 5. Next thing we need is we need to set up a stockpile zone. But well, first, let's start organizing things. We will build out our wall here. I'm going to go with... I'm going to do a variety of structures. Again, we could do like a massive thing, but that's more for your own play style. It says we don't have enough stored, 
but we're not going to have to worry about that for long. First, we're going to set up a stockpile. If you don't keep items in a roof shelter, they will start to decay. Set up a door. And now we're also going to set up the stockpile zone right here. They will start moving those items there. Here we have some basic objectives or things to start with. Now, one of our people will have to be a hunter and also sort of be our defense. So it looks like Larson and Tao. So to get them to use a weapon, you're going to right click on it and say equip. She now has a weapon that she'll be holding on to. Larson over here is packing food. To make things easier, we're just going to tell them all to construct. Yeah, so they do not have trainable intelligence, so we can't do anything there. Now that we have a stockpile and resources in it, we can actually see what we have available up there. Give her a pistol. She is cutting these trees down. So we can actually grow here. This will also give us wood that we can use for construction. You can also fast forward and slow and go back to normal speed down here. But let's start setting some things up. We have a lot of trees nearby, which means we're going to have to cut these down. Sometimes we have berry bushes. So up oh, there's a bush right there, you can see it. We'll have to harvest that. Basically, we're just using steel to construct this, so doesn't we'll use the same steel we go for like a huge thing versus doing like little ones like this. Alright, so everyone has a nice little place to live. They'll get constructed over time. Build a wall, or I'm sorry, build a door. That way everyone has their own little private space. She is eating right now. We'll harvest that. And our cat really isn't doing anything. A squirrel. You can set things to be hunted. We'll probably have to expand the stockpile later on. We have plenty of wood. So just to give ourselves a little bit of structure, we'll make some wooden floors. over here. This will be reclaimed. While they're doing that, we'll look around for any more steel. We have a geo a steam geyser which we can use for geothermal power. More berries. We have a ship chunk here. We will reclaim that. Probably get some steel out of it. Marble. 
more berries. building there. They must be going to reclaim it. There you go. So what's good is that we have a s small supply of steel or concentrated steel we can mine right there. Compacted. Again, we're going to need steel for a lot of our early construction. Oh, there's a bunch of it right there. Good. We'll fast forward. So we got some more steel and components. It's more for us. Have any haulers? Yeah. They'll eventually move that stuff into our stockpile. So let's give everyone a nice little bed. Yeah, you know, we gotta make them comfortable, right? And there is no rule for how big or little I am making these rooms at the moment. They do have ratings in terms of quality. But again, we're not going to really worry about that here. We will fast forward just to get things going. Once everything is done, they will put a roof up, and that will basically protect this area from being, um, for anything losing quality. Okay. We'll set, this will be, Her bed. You can also set medical beds or prison areas too. But it is nighttime, so we'll have to wait. So you can see this stuff will spoil eventually, unless we cool things off. New day. Everyone eat up. And finish your construction. Okay, now the roof is going up and officially finishing this building. Larson's room. And this will be Sal's. Everyone now has a little place to live. Now that that's done. going for a walk. We have some gold over there. Now that our stockpile is protected, that's the first major thing out of the way. Now we're going to 
start chopping these trees down, getting some food, or getting the farming going. We need to start making some things, including research and food, and including a butcher table. Now we got plenty of wood. Again, she's gonna put this in there and we'll show up there. There we go. So, so we're setting up for some strawberries. Now to harvest this, we just want to click right there. You have to do it. Sometimes you can just um mouse scroll over things to group select and other times you'll have to do it manually like this. I want to make a little work building too. There's just so many trees around. Once those trees are finished being chopped, this farm will go a lot quicker. As you can see, we have different qualities. So you know what, we'll use our vast supply of wood And this will become sort of our crafting zone. The better the the materials, obviously, the stronger it will be. Especially if there's raiders or stuff like that coming. But this will save us on steel. We'll just do that. So when you're really rolling in resources, then you can go fancy with higher quality metals. But for now, we're just simple folk making do in the world. should be growing very slowly. We're going to save our steel for some of our crafting benches. Some some lamps, I think. Let's see, if we can grow this stuff overnight. While they're sleeping, we sell things on super fast. Let's set up some things we're going to need. First, we're going to need a stove. We also need some research. And we're going to need a butcher table. Without the butcher table, we will not be able to harvest any animals we kill or hunt. Now we're 
running low on metal. Or, I'm sorry, meal. That's why we're going to be producing that. Now, these are going to need power. Power will be one of our upcoming things. So for defense, I'm going to just set up some sandbags for our guns. Again, they're still just working hard. Visitors, they're going to be traders. You can right click on them while having a columnist selected in order to try trading. You don't really need to at the moment. So, to make this easier, we're going to just go over here. I want to mine out this steel. Since Tao over here is our miner, she will get to work. Apparently there's no wall there. I don't know why. Oh, because of the terrain. Fine. Just do that, just to keep everything enclosed. So to do research, we have to go to the research menu. And the first thing that I like to do is go for a smithing. So we start getting some tools. Our stove is done so we can prepare food. To prepare anything you use the bills command which shows up for any kind of resource producing structure here. So because we do have Oh no, I'm sorry, we do not have anyone with cooking at 6, so we cannot do a fine or lavish meal, we'll have to do a simple. So the command is very simple here. You can set what kind of items you're going to use. I just like to use everything, you never know. And what I'm going to do is set this to do until you have X. This means that they will cook until we have X number of resources or X number of meals and then stop. You could set it to just cook forever if you want someone to be a dedicated chef. But I just do this, especially at the start. So I will do it until we have 20. That should be more than enough to keep us going. And again, we will solve our storage problem soon. In fact, let's prepare this right now. To get power, I am going to build a solar generator. Doesn't work in the dark, but that's okay. So since we're getting fancy, we build two. I'm going to need a building to store the batteries that we have planned. So, again, one, two, three. So we're moving into the electrical era. It's raining. This is why you of course need buildings. If we didn't have if we had these batteries built and rain on them, there's a good chance they could become damaged or explode. 
which is why you always want to build them in there. Yeah, we'll just name this. Yeah, we have low food. So we better do some hunting. Now over here is our hunter. Now we need the butcher table to get finished. Okay, roofing it up. We don't really need a floor in there, honestly. Tal is our miner. Again, she will just chop this up, get us the steel we need. What? Oh. Apparently, we found something very bad. You can also check out the character's needs. and their health over here. You can actually operate on people too. Okay. Here's our battery. Again, we need this steel. Okay, the butcher table is done. So I'm going to pause the game. You can either make kibble for your pets or butcher a creature. I'm going to set this to forever. That way, if ever I kill an animal or hunt them, someone will butcher them up for meat. Okay. Now, meat. We now have our generators up, so in order for this to work, we need to set up some power conduits. This will store our batteries. So essentially the power is going to come from the generator into the batteries, and then the batteries are going to power these. And they will also power our air conditioner and other anything electrical we need. Do need people to start cooking though. set a cooler up. We want to make sure that the cold part is blowing inside, obviously. There we go. But yeah, we are running out of food. Start feeding in to our battery soon. Problem is, everyone is so busy. No one has time to cook. There we go. Oh, someone just showed up. Jump. <laughs> and apparently, jump over here is naked and she wants to join us so she will not do research or dumb labor but she's an artist that's good and she needs clothing <laughs> so we look at her thing well she can be a miner good we have another hunter So 
So really, since she doesn't really do a lot of stuff here, we just need to do that. So as you can see, we actually have power going now. We also are going to need another place to build, or for her to live in. So, sorry, Jobsons, you're new. You're going to get the wooden house. As you can see, there's not enough power. These lights must be draining power like nobody's business. 1600 watts. And do this layer. Oh, excuse me. Once we have our power supply basically maintained. As you can see, it's just immediately being drained. There we go. We're starting to get power stored now. It's only at 50% efficiency, though. Let's deal with one and see what happens. Okay, we got food, we got the butcher. We do need a tailor if we want to get up some clothes. So again, we come over here. Because we have electricity now, we can set up an electric tailoring bench. But we also need to worry about our food spoiling. So let's move some of our power There. Actually, no. Quicker just to go like that. We'll now be able to cool this room off and make it refrigerated. Uh oh. We have a raider. Well, that's good. That will be a good place to show off how to do combat. So raiders are going to come in on the map and try and kill us. Because we're in an emergency situation, we're going to draft them, which gives us direct control. Move them to our sand. Now, where are they? There they are. Okay. We may attack him. There we go. Got him. 
Okay, and now don't forget you do need to undrap them in order for them to start doing their own job again. We'll strip that guy. Now if we didn't kill him, we could have taken him as a prisoner and tried to convert him to become a new colonist. Okay, so now we're going to try and cool things off in here. Let's make it a little cooler. There we go. It's now refrigerated, which is going to keep things from being spoiled. I think the problem is that we have two solar generators. Let's see. Will that affect the efficiency? And Jup took that person's clothing, so she is no longer naked. There we go. So things are starting to look up. We just need to deal with our food situation. And you can see the power is draining out of the battery because we are running it with the tailoring bench, and our cooler. This will slowly refill as our solar generator is now adding power. Yeah. So let's see. She's still cooking four. Okay, so Job here is a 12 cooker, so we can actually, or chef I should say, we can change this, where are you, there we go, and let's make a fine meal, do until you have X once again, can use everything, so jump over here, Now set to cook. Everything's good. We should probably bury him. And that would be under miscellaneous. Okay. Fortunately, our strawberries are still need to be grown. So we need to actually do some more hunting. Probably don't want to hunt up grizzly bear just yet. But we can hunt turkey. And we'll try and tame the boom rat. Uh oh, someone is not feeling so well. Okay, so we need a medical bed. Tell protector. There we go. Oh, so the boom rat apparently explodes. <laughs> so now we'll butcher that up. Lorson over here, or Jut will get into bed. And we'll now rest. Butcher some food. Simple meal until we have 10, just to be on the safe side, so we have food coming in. 
again it will be refrigerated so it won't spoil as long. You can also freeze it and it will last a whole lot longer. Oh good, our strawberries are done. Jump is now healed so we'll take our bed and do that. And it's raining. And as you can see, we are doing pretty well. Our basics are done. People are researching. We Again, we're limited by what we can and can do based on what people and what their skills are. But I'm also going to build... to do a little we'll make a little hospital up here no, actually that'll be our jail this will be our hospital you know just in case something bad happens so jump over here is producing some fine meals She's the only one who can do that because she's a higher up chef. Now as you can see the food is frozen so it will not spoil. Actually to be on the safe side that. Power is coming in. Oh, apparently he just killed that. So we can try and tame this grizzly bear. There's a 2.5% chance. The good news is we are producing food, but not a lot of food. We're going to need to be able to store this for the winter. You know what, let's make it a little colder. If we make it super cold in there, it will just freeze everything up. But it's also affected by what the temperature is outdoors, so... That's good. Okay, you can see that we are losing power, but we're storing enough that it's not affecting things. Tal is burning them in my oil. Apparently there was a jump pod crash. We'll take that. Resources are growing quite nicely. Uh-oh. Okay, well that's interesting. Alright, so it looks like we're in trouble once again. No rest for the weary. Now Lorson over here is against violence, right? No. She's against violence. Where is Shaper? In that case, drop the pistol. Lorson here will pick up the gun. 
and we need to defend. Shaper here will not do like anything, basically. And I don't know what she's doing all the way over there. There we go. Get into our defense. And Shaper will just sleep the night away. There's our raiding party. They'll probably wait until day. Oh. Hey! Don't shoot my cat. Kill my cat. You bastard. Alright. So, Lumi here is in shock. Which means that we can actually. Oh man, she's not doing so. We'll undraft. And we can try and convert her to become one of our colonists. So to do this, we want to capture. Or we actually need a bed first. Up. She's not doing so well. We need to get her into a prison and get her some medical attention. Don't eat shape. Shaper just doesn't do anything for us. She needs to recover. She's eventually going to bleed out unless we get her into a prison. She was treated. Okay, so now we're going to convert this into a prison. And we are going to capture her. Oop. She's not happy because she lost her pet. So now, Lumi here, we now have access to the prisoner tab. So we will treat her. and see we convert her to become one of ours. Okay, Lumi is better. We need to keep giving her medicine. have our medical here, so it'll go where the so she'll be treated. Good. Good. Okay, now she will rest up and heal.
try and recruit her over time. Food storage is doing good. Okay, Jup is now back to full power. And that is doing well. I think we're going to wrap things up. As you can see, a whole lot can happen in the first hour of play. Looks like someone pissed on the floor. <laughs> but as you can see, we're starting to get our food supply back. There are no nothing is pressing. Research is moving along. Again, the problem is we only have one person to do research, and Sal's basically our <laughs> every woman here. You know, I think to make it easier, Tell will not. Uh, yeah, she will not cook. Uh, Fail the chance. She's a warden, so that's why. Everyone is getting ready for the. Winter time that's coming. In fact, uh, I already have that. I wish we had another researcher, it would make life a lot easier for us. Okay, they're still trying to recruit. I don't really need that right now. We have more than enough food. How's our bill doing? Okay, we have more than enough. We got 20. And we could probably sell some clothes too. So these are things that it needs it needs any of these things in order to be produced. 120 ingredients. So I'm gonna make five. Because winter is coming. It's like they're talking. Who is idle? Larson just doesn't want to do anything. We have enough. St we, uh, we could probably use some more steel, actually. So, is there any more supplies of steel? Steel, steel, where are you? Hey, there we go. So again, we will come over here, orders, mine it out. And to make sure that Larson is the only one who does it. Turn that off. That way, Larson will have something to do while everyone else is cooking. Oh, and we are still trying to train this bear. Three of them. 
And remember, Shaper here abhors violence. Alright, looks like we have an emergency. Which means everyone get up. Actually, I'm gonna ask, give her. That's shy. The problem is that we don't have the metal works that we need in order to uh, produce the tools that we need. So now we're just going to have to rely on our basic weapons. We only have a bear we could train. It's three on three. This is actually not good. We may end up dying right here, but we will wrap things up after this fight, win or lose. Come on, yay! That's one. Surround him. Don't be a jump. Okay. Let's undraft. We will strip him. We have our medical bed, thankfully. And the good news is we survived. And yes, you can become cannibals if you want. But we got the save, so I think that's more than enough here. Let's wrap up this play again. We could spend like three, four hours playing this game and still trying to learn everything in there. But that should have given you a pretty good idea of what to expect in the first hour. And more importantly, what you're supposed to be doing, what's a UI, things like that. Once you get the basics, food, um, living quarters, and research going, you're pretty much set for the early game. And as you can see, there's a lot more we can do here. I'll pause here. We'll get one more like little zoom out of our colony. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you would like to see a part two to the guide, and we continue our little expedition here, let me know. Otherwise, thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, follow me on Twitch and Twitter under GWBicer to get the latest updates when content goes live. You can find my posts and podcasts on game-wisdom.com where I examine the art and science of games. And you can follow me or you can check out my Patreon campaign under game wisdom. Any donations would be greatly appreciated as they will allow me to keep putting out great content and even add more for people to enjoy. Thanks again for watching this new player's guide to RimWorld. Again, there's still probably three, four more hours to go before we really have even seen anything, but hopefully this will give you a good leg up. Thanks again, and I will see you all real soon.